Hello, hello! We are live with Dharma Talk Tuesday. I'm happy to be back. I wasn't here live last week because I had you go and watch the replay for Money Manifestation Secrets. I had a lot of people request to um, see that replay over an extended period of time. Woo, that light's really bright. And so that's what we did instead. I was actually facilitating a really incredible leadership training and um, it was one of those both and situations. So thank you for joining. So good to see you, so good to see you, so good to see you. Today's topic is what are the three most dangerous words in the English language? So I would love to see some guesses from you all. What could be the three most dangerous words in the English language. Like, think about this for a second. Um, and those of you that were on our Money Manifestation Secrets course call earlier today, you already know the answer to this question because we are, <laughs> I talked about it with you guys. But if you weren't on the course call, perfect. I would love for you to comment in the comment section right now and throw a couple guesses out. What could be the three most dangerous words in the English language? And why do we need to talk about them? Why is it important? Why? Um, is it something that can affect the way that you're creating in your life? So for those of you that are joining, hello and welcome to Dharma Talk Tuesday. And I'm requesting that you comment with your guests on the three most dangerous words in the English language. The three most dangerous words in the English language. So Chandra says should and can't. Someone else says, hi, I would argue that that's not a dangerous word. Um, <laughs> so should, can't, what else, what else do we have? The three most dangerous words in the English language. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Before I reveal this, can't, yes, no. All right. What are some other guesses? <laughs> the three most dangerous words in the English language. What do you think they are? The three most dangerous words. This is a really great exercise in critical thinking. So I want to hear some of your guesses. The three most dangerous words. I'm just going to say this over and over again until I get a few more comments and guesses. <laughs> Can't try. These are great guesses. White male privilege. Interesting. That is a very interesting contribution. Thank you for that, Kevin. All right, let's see a few more. Let's see a few more. The three most dangerous words you think in the English language. Let's, let's see them. Let's see them. Okay, any more? Any more? Any more guesses? Any more takers? Any more guesses? Tyree, I would love to hear what you think are the three most dangerous words in the English language. Someone says won't. All right. These are some great guesses so far. Lucia, what do you think the three most dangerous words in the English language are? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take a couple more guesses and then I'm going to launch into my spiel. Wait. <laughs> you know it, girl. <laughs> All right, Lucia says, I can't do it, can't try. Awesome, these are great guesses and they're coming along the same thread. In my opinion, and actually I can't take credit for this, I actually um, wanna give credit to the T. Harf Ecker Freedom First um, training school because this is where I got this from and I thought it was so brilliant. I wanted to share it with you. The three most dangerous words in the English language are, I know that, or a variation of that would be, I already know. And the reason, how about this lighting? This is a little crazy. The reason why it's so dangerous is because that puts you in a framework and an energy of closed of non-receptivity, of an unwillingness to see anything differently. So I'll just repeat that for anyone who just joined. The three most dangerous words in the English language are, I know that. So think about this. If you're somebody who is ambitious and wanting to create a shift in your life, you're wanting to create transformation, how can you possibly get to point B if you are completely attached to point A, because the energy of I know that is attachment to point A. So yes, um, Lucia says it brings in a closed mind. It means you can't learn. 
Um, Kevin says, Socrates, the only true wisdom in knowing is you know nothing. Exactly. Thank you, Kevin. That's a great contribution. So that's exactly it. And so when we're talking about manifesting and when, we're, and thank you all for your guesses and contributions, I want to acknowledge every single one of you. Great work. I really appreciate bringing your voice to the table and bringing your thoughts to the table. So, um, when we're talking about manifesting, one of the things I always say is that when you want to shift your energy set point, which means that you're shifting from, let's say the vibration of like courage into the vibration of, um, like love, which is a much higher vibration, you need to let go of all things associated and connected with the vibration of courage in order to land at the vibration of love. And one of the things I advise people to do is to ask, what am I willing to be wrong about right now? Okay, so let's even take it to a less elevated conversation. Let's say you're in some kind of like fight or quarrel or conflict or disagreement with your partner or with a client. A really powerful way to move that interaction forward is to, in responsibility, in ownership, to ask yourself, okay, so what am I willing to be wrong about right now? Because when you have two people who are committed to being right because they know they already know, guess what happens? A standstill. So think about your relationship with the universe and with God as the same as your relationship with another person. If the universe is trying to create transformation and breakthrough and possibility, Lucia says love, faith, possibility, exactly, in your life, and you're in a place like crossed arms, you're like, I already know, I already know, I know that already. How can it possibly bring you something new? How can it possibly create a shift? How can it possibly show you a new way? Hearts and likes, if this is resonating. Tyree says, ha, great coaching. <laughs> Thanks, coach. I appreciate that. Lucia says, nothing changes, stalemates. Exactly. Another way we talk about that in the manifesting world is it creates a push-pull. And so it's like, you know, one of the things we were talking about in the Money Manifestation Secrets course that I'm teaching right now is that the first thing you need to do when you are wanting to manifest something is to identify your desire. So maybe you've got your desire. Maybe you know you're attracting 10 clients this month. Maybe you know that you're attracting the love of your light this life this year. Love of your light, I like that too. Um, maybe you already know that you, you, your desire is, like for me, I'm, and I'll just throw this out there right now, because I'm attracting and calling in the perfect traffic team. And this could be Facebook, it could be SEO, it could be Google Ads, I don't freaking care. I just want them to be in perfect alignment with me. So that's a desire that I have that I'm putting out there and um, creating alignment with. That's a desire that I have. And what happens is we, we, it's like we don't intentionally say, I already know, fill in the blank. It's like we have this underlying subconscious um, connection with the energy of I already know. And the underlying subconscious connection is beliefs. And those beliefs are things that stop you, stop you. So for example, I'm not worthy. Um, the perfect ad team doesn't exist for me. Or I can't afford the perfect ad team. Or they just, they won't create the right ROI, so it's not gonna work. Or, you know, in other cases, other examples, um, that person will never understand me. Or, ooh, and then it's just like, doesn't this just make you feel sick in your stomach even to just go into these limiting beliefs? But guess what's happening? Every time you're in an I already know that attitude, that's what you're doing to the universe. It's like you put your desire out there, but you're ha you have this like, I already know that attitude with these beliefs. And so what that does is it creates a push pull. It creates a cross current at which point a stalemate happens. Things are frozen. You hit an energy set point and you can't elevate anymore. So if you're wanting to shift, if you're wanting to increase your energy set point, if you're wanting to um, experience new results, that means being open to a new mindset. It might mean being a student all over again. It might mean recognizing, wow, I was really wrong, so to speak. 
as opposed to being right, <laughs> about the fact that I was limited. Well, I was really wrong about the fact that I was worthless. I'm actually totally worthy. I was really wrong about the fact that that person doesn't understand me because actually they understand me better than I understand myself or whatever it looks like. So I just wanna look at some of the comments here. Um, <laughs> Tyree said, I actually had a smile. You guys should go and check out Tyree. She is a wonder woman on this planet incredible person, one of my coaches in my life, and one of my really good friends. I recommend going and checking out her page, the Inspirement Tribe, and everything she is up to. And her Facebook Lives are Tuesdays at noon, right? And you can go to her page. Um, Cheryl says, haha, I figure I can learn from everyone. Totally. Tyree says, similar convo with someone this morning about this. Yep. Carrie says, yes, I am. Hi, Carrie. Lots of great friends coming on. Karen says, love the hair, great message. Thanks, girl. Yes, I changed my hair and I'm loving it. I'm obsessed with it, actually. Hi, Dawn, good to see you here. Hi, Tina. Yes, Melissa. Jessica Reeves, great crowd, great crowd. All right, so the way that you can start to apply this is to start to ask yourself, um, where in my life do I have the attitude of I know that? Where in my life do I have the attitude of I already know? <laughs> That's a very assumptive attitude. That's a very arrogant attitude. And it's not wrong. And it's not bad. It's just blocking you from creating the results that you want. That's all. So you gotta think about it. Are you more committed to creating results, to creating transformation, to creating, let's say, um, like a loving, beautiful, vulnerable, intimate relationship, or are you committed to knowing and to being right about that thing that happened with that person that one time, or about the beliefs that you have about yourself or about that person? You, you want to think about what's important to you. Right, like when they, when the group that I was on, the T Harv group, who, T Harv Ecker is where I got, I can't take credit for this, I got this from T Harv Ecker. When um, the coach said it on the call, I was like, oh shit, that's so good, because it gets you thinking. So I want to invite you in this moment to start thinking about where in your life, it might, there might be a blind spot for you, there might be an area of your life that you're not even realizing how righteously you're showing up in. In which case, sometimes it's also helpful to get feedback. Now, the thing about feedback is that it doesn't always feel good, especially if it's honest about an area of your life that's not totally working. So, and if you go and get feed, like for example, I'll just be vulnerable and honest. I got feedback from my sister about some aspects of our relationship that really wasn't working. But I was so grateful for her feedback because it helped me understand um, and be empowered about what I can do differently to be better in relationship with her based on what she wants versus what I thought I knew she wanted as far as being in relationship with me. I had all kinds of assumptions about what I thought she wanted me to show up as and to be. And once I really asked her and I was willing to be wrong and I put aside my I know that attitude when I was talking to her, I realized there was a lot that I didn't know. And all of a sudden there was an opening and there was a space for a real relationship and real intimacy and real um, connection to occur. The next thing you know, I'm getting a birthday present in the mail from her. Amazing how that works. A transformation can be that fast. It's so amazing. When, when one person shifts. And don't be surprised if you start to embrace this understanding in your life and you start to see transformation in everyone else around you. Like all of a sudden, everyone else around you starts to look and feel and behave different. And it's like, they didn't attend this Dharma Talk Tuesday, although they can, and you can share this with them and you can send them the link and you can tag them in this post and maybe then both of you can create an empowered transformation. But even if they didn't, you'd be shocked and surprised with what becomes possible when you shift your attitude and then they change. I'm telling you, this is exactly what happened to me and I've seen it happen to other people too who do this type of work. So let me just check out some of the comments here. Hi Dawn, 
Hi, Dana. Dawn says, whenever I say I know, I immediately think, oh, crap, I'm blocking. Oh, that's good. You're already on the same page. I love that you're posting this. Cool. Hi, Sandra. Leanne says, hey there, Julie. Hi, Leanne. So um, that's essentially it for my topic I wanted to talk about today. It's short and sweet and powerful and concise. Um, if you have thoughts, comments, or questions, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your own experience, your own thoughts, your own aha moments and revelations on this topic, whether you're watching the live version right now or the replay, because I always go back and read and respond to the comments. So um, that's basically it. I'm super excited to connect with you today. Dawn is about to ask a question, so I'm going to wait another moment. We started our Money Manifestation Secrets class today, and I'm super jazzed and excited about it. It's such a good group. It's such a good class. It's such powerful content. It's like the foundation and the basis for effective manifestation. And if you missed it, I'm so sorry. The deadline has passed. The enrollment has closed, but I will be opening the course up again, hopefully at some point later. Um, let's see. Lucia says you took the first step, came from a place of willingness to be wrong. It would not have happened if you came from, yeah, yeah, Lucia, exactly. I think there was more to that sentence, but I totally catch your drift. Oh, a not so generous space. There it is. Dawn says, do you say or do anything when you hear someone you're speaking to say, I know that, I know that. Um, yeah. Jessica says, this is right on time. <laughs> Good. Um, yeah, so Dawn, you can handle that a few different ways. And this is a great question. You can handle that a few different ways. One way, it's depending, well, it, it also depends on the personality type that you're speaking with. Chances are, if it's somebody who's saying, you're talking to them and they're like, I know that, I know that, chances are they're more of like a controlling personality type. Um, because controllers can be pretty impatient. <laughs> and if they're already responding to you in that way of, yeah, I know, I know, I know, that means they're probably feeling impatient. And so you got to think like, okay, if they're being impatient, if they're already in the place of knowing, if they're in the place of like, I, I'm, I'm not open and willing to hear more, thinking, depending on the context of what they came to you for. So for example, Dawn, if it's like a coaching client for you, or if it's somebody who is on the phone with you to be a potential coaching client, you can even just say, all right, so you can throw it back to them. So what are your thoughts about this? Are, are you, like, what are you, what are you hearing me say? Or what's working in your life? Or, okay, great, so how's that working for you? In other words, you throw it back to them and you put them in ownership of the conversation so that you can eventually get them to a point of, okay, great, so if it's not working for you, are you willing to be wrong about this? Or, great, if it is working for you, what's the next level? What could be the next level of fill in the blank for the thing that they're wanting, that they're, ta they're talking to you about? So hopefully that helps. Um, Dawn says, good idea. Awesome. Hi, Giselle. Hi, Tina. <laughs> All right. So that pretty much sums it up. Um, what else can I share with you? I uh, was the captain of a leadership group training last week. And I was co-captaining with a friend of mine, and it was incredible and powerful, and breakthroughs left and right. Thank you, Dawn, for saying my eye makeup looks fabulous. I actually just worked out, so it's a little schmutzkin, which is fine. Um, <laughs> I can feel Tyree laughing at me right now. This is obviously a very casual Dharma Talk Tuesday. I've been really pushing the Money Manifestation Secrets course in the last few Dharma Talk Tuesdays. So right now we're back to chilling. Um, and soon I'll start talking about Dharma Live, which is happening in December, which I'm so freaking excited about. I can't even handle it. I can't wait to tell you all about it. So that's happening in December. I'm gonna be signing those papers soon. And um, yeah. That's pretty much it. It's great to see you here. <laughs> I hope you're doing awesome. I hope you're having a powerful week. I hope you have transformations in your relationships and in your businesses and in your lives this week as you embrace 
the transformation of using and thinking the three most dangerous words in the English language. Because guess what? As you shift and transform, you create a ripple that goes out into the world and affects so many more people than just you or the one person or the few people that you're in relationship with. It actually affects so many more people than that. So be that vibrational shift in the world because it's not just about you. You're affecting the entire vibration of the world's consciousness. You are so powerful. You are so worthy of that ascension. And I'm so excited for you and to hear about what you generate. And I hope you have a powerful week. And I'll see you next week on Dharma Talk Tuesday, 6 o'clock Pacific. Bye!